We're rolling. Um, this may be the first shot of the video. If it is, welcome. We're about to do our little quick uh, like seven minute shakeout before the race. We're trying out something new, which is kind of nerve wracking. Um, we're trying to, we're using the drone to get a cool shot of us while we run, but we don't want to run with the remote. So we have the drone doing the active track stuff and then the remote is locked in the car. So I'm really hoping nothing goes wrong because we might be far away from the remote if we need yeah. it. We've also got Cobb with us. Yeah, we've also got Cobb. Right, should we start? Uh, yeah, let's go. Yes. And go. <laughs> it's following us. That's pretty cool. Let's go. Okay, so update on the drone. It just started shooting up in the sky. Um, yeah, I think that because, I think that because it was kind of low in battery life for us to charge it, um, it's doing like it's return home stuff, but it's really high up there, starting to lose sight of it. I think it's gonna go about 300 meters up and then fly home. But the thing is, is I think when it tries to land, there might be some trees in the way. So uh, it might be, kind of important that we get home before it does. Hey, look at that, look at that, look at that. There it is. Oh, we beat it back. We beat it back just barely, but it knows what it's doing, and it's gonna land on top of the car. Should at least. There we go. All right, it's landed. Poor cop here only went like uh, like less than a mile, so he wants to go further. Normally, we do our doubles with him, so he's used to three miles. So for him, this is nothing. He's has way more energy than what we just used, so. He just got warmed up. <laughs> Um, it's 10.09, we're making breakfast. Brayden's supposed to be here in a few minutes. We're gonna eat some really, really good food. We've got some hash browns already on the, the griddle from Trader Joe's, of course. Then we're gonna chop those up, put them in, scramble them with eggs. And then we've got some Kodiak mix to make some great waffles shaped like farm animals. And, oh, put the stove on, we want pancakes too. Oh, I guess Lex wants pancakes, so, you know. And then, uh, the smoothie, thanks to the mother, uh, have to drink this. Brayden, you gotta say hi to the vlog. Right now. That's him. Um, yeah, we bought some walkie talkies for like when we're doing shoots and stuff and like when um, we're making YouTube videos and like the camera is really far from the subject or like when we're trying to plan things, it makes it a little bit easier so we're not screaming and shouting. Um, and also they're so much fun. So Brayden's got one with him and he's on his way. I used to live on a So first game complete, uh, it was five to two, Brian got me, but I scored a goal in the last two seconds, so I was really happy with that. Um, 
the Bruins did not pull through. Uh, but now Leo and Brandon are gonna go off and we'll see if he can do any better than I did. So, I'm gonna talk to you. We played some more NHL, we played like three more games. I played Leo, beat him 3-1, it was really close. Uh, then I played Brayden again, thinking I was better. He still demolished me, it was 4-1. to one. But, that was better than the first game, so we're making progress, 5-1 to one actually. So, just barely better than the first game, but uh, I feel better. Uh, uh, it, I, I'm trying to learn how to play it, so I made progress. <laughs> but, it, it's really a frustrating game. I don't like, uh, I don't like losing in the game. It, it, it sucks. I used to live on Houses Street. All rockets on the back porch, swings high above my feet. I used to live on Houses Street. Now I look at the phone. Alright, we're here at UCLA now. It is time, uh, not for the race, but to get ready for the race. The drive over is pretty light. There's a little bit of traffic, but not too bad. We got our credentials. We're in the athlete area. It's actually pretty awesome because they have the entire, not the entire, but most of the IM field uh, open for the athletes, and then it cuts right into the track. So when it's time for the race, you just head right in there. It's all isolated, all, it's really professionally done. Um, yeah, we have like, I think we got about two hours, three hours maybe. Uh, out from the race, so I'm feeling good. I'm just trying to get a little bit of those final snacks and having some fig bars. Probably start having my more in like 70 minutes before, but for now I'm I'm good. I'm just trying to chill, keep the vibes positive, stay warm. Don't want to get too cold because it could get cold tonight. But how are you feeling, Leo? I'm doing well too. Like like said, we got our credentials. I got the athlete pass. Um, we're hanging out in here. They've got they even got PTs in here for us if we need anything. I'm feeling fine, so I think I'll be I'll be good. But who knows, maybe afterwards feeling like it, I'll get a massage or something. That could be fun. I know I took advantage of that at Worlds. It was really nice. I had the dude give me a back massage and helping me out. But I actually did have a back issue then. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good. It's 5.41. Um, I've got everything timed, so I'll probably start warming up about uh, 7 p.m. So I've got a little over an hour. Perfect timing. Um, yeah, I am just tremendously excited. I told myself that I would let you
remember how I learned to talk Staring at the sky from the hundredth floor Asking for more Speak to the screen To hear a reflection Losing my life To pure entertainment And a hope star And we are no different So tell the lemons For pure entertainment the meet itself, the LA Grand Prix, was put on very well. It was the first year that we've had it back in LA after a long time where it's been in uh, Mount Sac. And I think the fact that it's in LA, not to hate on Mount Sac, but LA is more LA. Like if you call it the LA Grand Prix and people go to Mount Sac, they're like, oh, it's California, but it's not quite LA. So to have it at UCLA, so close to downtown, to the beach, the mountains, makes it much more of a destination, which I think helps bring in bigger pros and more competition. And when you have more competition and bigger pros, more people are gonna come and watch. Also, it's in LA, so there's so many people that can come. I mean, you're next to this massive population. So it's, I think, a great step forward for the LA track and field community. It had, I mean, there was a world record that was broken, Ryan Krauser in the shot put. So having that is great for the community. I think it's gonna be good progress heading into the 2028 LA Olympics. I think by then we could have it even more progressed. I think more track meets in LA, that's what we want. And this meet is a great step in the right direction. A lot of people ask about the warm up. I warmed up with two miles uh, just around the UCLA campus. Uh, rope stretched before that, of course, but then headed in, did some dynamic stretching on the field. Uh, I find it uh, primes my legs quite well. I feel snappy and I'm feel, I feel ready, so. The race was set to be paced at 62 to 63 by the pacing pirate. It was, uh, he did a great job at that. I think he came through 2K, so a little bit less than he wanted, but still, you know, he did a good job. He brought the guys through what he could. Abdi Hamid was really able to take advantage of that pace. As you guys saw, he got the world standard, 1307. It was phenomenal, especially considering he fell in the first 180 meters of the tr race. I remember seeing that. I was probably in 20th or something, and I see this guy just like tumbling on the ground, and I realized it was Abdi Hamid. I had to run out. I had to, uh, you know, dodge him as the whole pack were. Some people got to had to jump over him. Luckily, I could just kind of go around, but it was, I was shocked. I was like, oh no, you know, because I'm, I'm friends with Abdi Hamid, and he trains with Nico, and it's, you never want to see a man down, but luckily he's probably one of the most determined people I know because he got right back up, he swung around the next lap, and I think by the end of the first mile he was back in the front. It was really impressive, and honestly seeing that definitely uh, gave me some extra motivation and inspiration to do what I needed to do out there on the track. Coming through a mile, the time was 4.17, so quicker than I wanted, considering the pace is set to be around like 4.20, 4.21 for the record. Uh, but I knew it bought me a little bit of insurance, and knowing that, I did slow down a little bit intentionally. Not, uh, I slowed down more than I was hoping to, but still within reason. Uh, the second mile was, around, was I think, a 4.29. I came 
through with a mile to go knowing I needed roughly a 419, 420 for the record. And uh, I just, there was no way I wasn't gonna make that happen. You know, when in that race, being two miles into the race and seeing that, I wasn't gonna let it fall. I, uh, I knew what I had to do and I just, with the encouragement of my friends and family cheering me on, I did it. though was coming through the finish I didn't know if I had the record or not I was probably 95% certain but they had a result on the timer where you normally see your time so I didn't know what the clock was when I came through so I had to wait what felt like an eternity to see the results and finally the cameraman showed me on his phone and it was just uh it was thrilling to say the least I was so happy I was overjoyed it was, uh, it was an amazing experience. I got to, you know, celebrate with all my friends and family, hug them, uh, scream, yell. And then, uh, then I did an interview with Sidious. I actually had to cut it short because I felt like I was gonna vomit. And then uh, my feeling was correct because I went outside and I vomited. Uh, the night before I had pesto pasta, or no, not pesto pasta, I had like a cream sauce pasta with mushrooms that my mom made. It was delicious, but the mushrooms didn't sit well. and the mushrooms ended up sitting on the ground. So uh, we can play a clip of that if we haven't already. Then I got to meet Craig Angles, which was awesome. He's an idol of mine, he's a real inspiration. So to talk to him was really cool. Dude, I'm out here starstruck. 1334, 339? Thank God I'm not in high school. <laughs> The better part of the past two years, actually, this record has been in my scopes. It's the idea probably started last year when I was exiting cross country season and entering track. I remember Sean throwing around the idea of, oh, you guys are really fit. Why don't you try and run in track 5K? You know, he thought me and Colin could both go around 1345 and uh, at Sound Running, race of 5K, had a beautiful race, sat in the pack, just found my rhythm and ran 1343, which was at the time the second fastest uh, all time 5K. So that um, was a real shocker for me. That made me think, man, uh, this is a fun event. It's a real grind, but it's something where your training can really uh, pay off. So it then made me think about the record because on my first attempt I was only six seconds away so I was like that's still a good margin but it's it's within reason uh, so it made me want to go after it and I didn't have another chance that season and I also wasn't sure if I could become fit enough that season so then the goal was pushed off till my senior season this year and I was really hoping for it and then in December I got injured that was rough uh, it was not Obviously, it's not ideal, you know, you don't want that. Uh, it made it so then I was set back a fair bit. And it took me, I mean, I've been working to get back to that fitness for the better part of the last six months. I ran 14 flat at New Balance, which is good. 
uh, and it was a good benchmark, but it wasn't where I wanted to be. But then about a month later, I ran 1344, which was much better than New Balance, but still not where I wanted to be. But throughout both those times, I've been just putting in massive amounts of training, you know, trying to get as fit as I could. And now at Sound, or sorry, now at the LA Grand Prix, I think I was feeling really good and I went for it and I got it. So that felt absolutely amazing. It was a long time in the making because I had started so low when I was injured and then I had to work my way all the way back up. I had benchmarks so I can track the progress. So it feels amazing to finally have done it. It's been something that's been on my sights for so long, something I care very passionately about. So it was, uh, it was a really meaningful experience. And even more so, I think, because it was in my backyard. I mean, I guess, not literally, because right now I'm, I'm in my backyard and there's no track, but it was in LA. So it, that was really cool to race in LA, you know? I think being able to wake up in your own bed, have a home-cooked meal the night before, and then just drive up 45 minutes to an hour and, and get on the track, it's awesome. It's something that a lot of people don't get to do and something that I've only done a couple of times. And it made the experience a lot more enjoyable. Hopefully that wasn't too much depth for you guys, but I just wanted to tell the story. Uh, thank you for watching. I don't know if Leo has anything to add, but uh, yeah. Hopefully that was interesting. I, it was, sure was a fun experience for me. Uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.